Welcome to Systemize Your Success. I'm Dr. Steve Day. Today's episode is a special one. It's actually a recording of a new podcast that myself and Jane Baylor, the Smart Connector, are putting together. We're in the pilot stage at the moment, and this is one of those pilot episodes. It's a deep dive into the world of call setting and using different approaches to, to get the goal of having more qualified leads booked into your or your sales team's diaries. Now, the reason myself and Jane have decided to create this new podcast called The System Driven Marketeer is because we realized after working together on various collaborations that we see the world from very different angles. We approach and solve problems using totally different techniques and neither are right or wrong. One technique may be suitable for one type of business or one type of business owner or one type of problem, and the other one may be better or worse for something else. There are many ways to crack any nuts. And the way that me and Jane approach the world and therefore approach creating solutions for the problems that most or all business owners have leads to some very interesting conversations. As I said, the topic of today's episode, the one I'm going to share with you after this intro, is all about creating a call setting system or getting calls booked into a diary. Do you do that through a systemized approach or do you do it by going to an agency? There are pros and cons with both models. And today we explore from very different perspectives, which we believe personally, myself and Jane, is the right fit for our business and what we believe that other businesses, or we then discuss what other businesses might be able to take from that as well. I also cover something called the core revenue flow, as it was in doing this for myself, or revising this, which I do on an annual basis, I realized that I had this big hole in my sales pipeline, which was I didn't have the ability to consistently qualify leads and get them booked into my sales team's diaries. And so therefore, that led me to start creating these systems. And I cover that as really a preamble into a future episode where I'll be going into a lot more detail on that. And it's as it's one of the, the key frameworks that I work with with our clients when they've worked with us for some time, we're looking at their business as a whole and trying to create basically a cash generating machine that doesn't involve the owner at all in the process of finding new clients, selling to new clients, and delivering services and getting repeat business. Once you've done that for one core part of your business, i.e. the core revenue flow, you then have a business that works without your involvement and then you suddenly become a true business owner instead of just having a glorified job which takes over your life. So this episode covers a lot of detail all around the sales process and around how we have both implemented this very differently on our businesses and I believe there's a huge amount of value in here which you're going to love. If you do love this episode and you've never commented on every episode before or you've never emailed me and let me know or commented on Facebook when we put these up and promote them, if you found this episode brilliant, if you found this insightful, if you want to see more of this, then please do on this one occasion comment and let us know. This is an, a podcast which we are planning on doing on a weekly basis and it will, it will be a huge encouragement that we should put the time and effort into actually launching this if we get some positive comments about this specific episode so we know that systems driven marketing there's a place for it in the world and people want to hear more of these sorts of conversations if that's you please do me a favor on this occasion go to wherever you found this episode whether it's on your podcast app whether it's on uh, facebook or social media or uh, youtube then please leave us a comment or just email me admin at systemsandoutsourcing.com and it'll come through to our team or hello at systemsandoutsourcing.com, I should say. Either will come to us, but I'm hello at systemsandoutsourcing.com. It's our outward facing email. So send us an email and let us know your thoughts. Massive, massive thank you. Anyway, enjoy this wonderful one off episode, which is the Systems Driven Marketeer pilot episode. Enjoy. So the question is this How do entrepreneurs like us, who don't have an endless supply of cash, how do we leverage the best apps, virtual assistants, automation tools, and systems to scale our businesses, increase our profits, and have more time to do what we love to do each day? That is the question, and this podcast will give you the answer. My name is Dr. Steve Day, and this is Systemize Your Success. Welcome to the System Driven Marketer podcast. My name's Jane Baylor, and I'm here with the amazing Steve Day. Hi, Jane. Good to be back. Yeah, so we're going to talk all about marketing systems, one of those 
really thrilling topics. Well, it's thrilling to us anyway. And if you're interested in scaling your business, then you are going to be very interested in the stuff that we talk about, particularly today, because we are going to talk about appointment setting and lead generation and all of those really exciting things that are going to move the needle on your growth, aren't we, Steve? Yeah, absolutely. And we just 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 before we came on, we were discussing this because we've approached this same issue of appointment setting, getting qualified leads into your call diary, into your sales call diary. We approach it from very different angles. And yeah. I'm interested to hear what you're doing. I think you're interested to hear what I'm doing. So let's get into definitely, it. Definitely, definitely. And we were talking beforehand because we always have a chat before we record these episodes about Okay, so what are you doing right now? What should we talk about and and so on? So I think one of the things that's really interesting is Steve has built a business around systems. This is what he teaches. He is a systems guy. So he will systemize, he does systemize for success. That's what he does. And obviously I have a big marketing agency background. I've worked with agencies for a really, really long time. I've run agencies, scaled them, sold them, you know, done everything, merged agencies, all sorts of things. So my default setting is to move towards agencies, agency suppliers, sometimes freelancers, but I will tend to look to outsource rather than necessarily build that team myself because you know I've managed teams before in the past and I found it very, very stressful. And obviously, um, there, there needs to be a balance, doesn't there? Because obviously, by systemizing your success, you take the stress out of it. And that's why I am curious to talk to Steve and why this debate will be really interesting for you. And for him, he's never been a big agency guy. You know, he self-confessed, um, perhaps doesn't quite... Uh, see the value of agencies. And so we always have such a fascinating discussion and today is going to be no different, right? Yeah. And I, I, I just, I'm not sure if it's not, I don't see the value in it. It's, it's more that I guess I'm, I'm, whenever I've tried in the past, I don't mm. feel I've got the value I anticipated or expected yeah. for the money that I spent. And that yeah. may be on me and the way I dealt with it. I'm definitely not going to say it was, it's you know it's a one-sided uh, issue here, but I think that because of my love and of systems and that I feel that, that is my superpower, then I actually levitate to that. Where in some cases maybe that's not appropriate. So let's have a look at this. So what the topic of today, the topic of discussion today is call setting. How do we get people to book qualified leads into yeah. your own or your if you have a closing i have somebody that does my my strategy calls and my closing for me yeah which is again another system that we created yes um and now once that was created we then go right we've got to fill that person's diary now i've got to look at actually getting more calls into that and so um this for me was just a new challenge to say okay how do i get my existing team or hire somebody with maybe a bit of experience in this to come into my business and from the fact that we'll know nothing about what I do, about the value we give to our clients, about, yeah. about um, the history of you know, all the clients we've had and the testimonials or my backstory. How do we take that total green person yeah. and turn them into somebody who can actually have conversations on my behalf? And often these conversations are happening on my personal profiles. So the majority of people coming towards me on social media will either be through my personal LinkedIn or my personal Facebook Messenger account. Mm. And so they, these people are often speaking as me for, like, for me. And the person on the other end at the beginning will not actually be aware that it's not me doing that initial stage in the messaging. And so for me, there's a massive fear factor it, when I was when I started this, it's like I don't want them to screw up. I don't want them to offend anybody. I don't want them to say stuff that I wouldn't say. You know, so there's a huge amount of of uh, barriers to overcome. And I think get me don't get. I'm interested to hear your point. But do you did you feel the same when you appointed an agency, a professional agency, to do this for you? Well, I didn't actually. And I think the reason why is because generally I have a lot of confidence in terms of my um, my my gut feeling about who to hire, you see. So and that's obviously based on experience. So I think 
I've definitely had some bad experiences. I'm not saying I get it right every time. Um, but I think a lot of it is just to do with its dialogue, communication, uh, making sure that the lines of communication are kept open because I really think that, uh, you know, just like any job in the real world, if you have somebody working for you, whether it is an agency or a freelancer or a VA or whatever, if you don't communicate with them, that's when it's likely to go wrong. So, um, you know, I generally tend to tell people, yeah, I give them a lot of exposure to my my content and I tell them to go in and I tell them to read this and go, you know, have a look at the comments that I make on LinkedIn, the types of posts. In other words, you know, do their research. And then I talk to them myself and I tell them why I'm so excited about my business and why they should be excited too. And I motivate them because uh, I think that is it's when people aren't motivated and they don't really understand what to say or do. That's when it can go wrong. And then, I mean, I think I've attempted to do similar things. And interesting, when I did, actually did this in the past with an agency, not particularly for course, I think it's for marketing in general. Yeah. I think what I ended up doing was totally overwhelming them because we we have, I've been going for about seven years now, thereabouts, and um, we produce a lot of content in that time. And it's, and even like just the number of testimonials we've got, the number of case studies we've got, the, I mean, the number of posts go into the hundreds and probably even to the thousands now. And so this was going back maybe two and a half years, I think. And what I did was sort of we've got this big spreadsheet, the master spreadsheet of all of our, at that time, all the content and different areas that we, that I've just mentioned now. And I was like, right, here you go, go and have a look at this. <laughs> and I think that was, that was the problem. I didn't have a structure to it. I hadn't, uh, what's it created, curated a list of like, these are the things you really should look at. These are the ones that are going to give you that picture. Listen to these three episodes, for example, of my podcast. Like here's some brilliant examples of our most successful posts. And that's what I've done this time around. I think that's been a big, big difference. And um, how have you approached it? Something similar or? Totally yeah. Different? So recently I've been uh, creating some new landing pages. Now, again, I don't create them myself I will write the copy because I'm very particular about messaging but I have a team an agency who create those for me or sometimes I will create them with my assistant but I think the interesting thing about having a landing page and one that um, you know I've created recently it's very very short is that essentially you have to boil your value down to the the simplest possible form so I think those are quite helpful because if you think about it, um, our audience, they have to get it really quickly, don't they? If they're going to take the next step, whatever that step is. And that's obviously the purpose of a landing page with a call to action, book a call or whatever, or buy this, depending on obviously price point and what we're selling. So I think landing pages are very helpful because um, it really anybody that is, um, you know, they're either going to be our prospect and our ideal client, or they will be somebody who's working for us. They need to be able to respond, I think, and say, okay, I get it now. Get it. Yeah. So I think those are very, very helpful because otherwise, as you said, it's quite easy to overwhelm people and say, I've got 300 episodes in my podcast and I'd like you to work your way through them and uh, let me know what you think when you've come to the end. It's like, whoa, that's, 300 hours of their time um and uh let, let alone the feedback <laughs> yeah no exactly exactly and i think that's yeah. probably probably where i went wrong last time is totally overwhelmed <laughs> um one of the um the i think the challenges that i've had trying to do this myself and we're just about getting there now i had a really like successful conversation with someone the other day within five minutes they've gone from just reaching out to me on Messenger to actually getting on the phone just by a few, maybe actually it was about 15 minutes just because of the time delays, but it was like a series yeah. of maybe eight messages. Mm -hmm. And what I felt incredibly encouraged by was that even though I happened to be doing it because I was just sat on my computer and I was just trying out a new script and literally it just popped up. So I thought, oh, I'll just give it a go rather than my, my VA normally does it every morning before I, before I wake up. Um, was that within that time, ju sorry, we're just copy and pasting mm. the pre 
the templated examples with tweaking, you know, obviously because they've mentioned a certain pain, therefore you relate that back in the message. So obviously they are suggested responses, which we then personalize. Yeah. Just following the process, you know, looking on their profile, seeing what they do for a job, giving some related, um, uh, like I said, giving specific, uh, inserting specifics into the structure, but just mm. by going through and then copy and pasting the, the last stages, we then got, person's phone number and then actually made a call to them and that to me was a a massively encouraging thing because we've struggled for ages with this Mm -hmm. and we've been trying this for probably about six months now roughly but without a real structure to it and the challenge that i've had in the past when i used to do this myself a few years ago um and then when trying to get especially trying to get somebody else to come into it is unless you've got a really tight structure Mm-hmm. then it becomes just a personal conversation. Yeah. And that's very hard to replicate and scale. Definitely. So the more tight that is and the more you are taking people down a predetermined path, it it makes it, it makes it actually possible for someone to do that for you. The oh, more you yeah. the more I'm, I'm, what and I think that that must be how the agencies do it is they've obviously figured this out they've got their sequencing and messaging and then they're just plugging in a few extra details that you happen to have given them you're absolutely 100 percent right and consistency is key and if you found a formula that works don't deviate from it i mean i obviously one of the reasons why i love these conversations that we have together is that you can have a system for anything you can have a system for tech you can have a system for messaging you can have a system for content distribution or whatever but the lovely thing about systems is that you don't have to you don't have to exhaust yourself having to think up oh what shall i say now or what shall i do now it's just yeah plug it in plug it into the system plug it into the messaging system and um i mean i've been having some great results myself i've actually outsourced um some appointment setting uh recently to um i would say another agency but I I really, really love what they're doing. And when I go into my sales navigator account, I'm just like, oh, great. You know, there's another kind of 50 people that have said no. (laughs) And one that has said, yeah, you know, I'd like to know more. That's all you want. You know, that's that's the hand raise, you know. So a lot of it is about timing because people will you know, in the expert space, um, they won't be needing what we do all the time. What will happen is they will come to a particular point in their business where they think for you, maybe it's, I just can't stand this chaos anymore. I'm just working too long hours. Um, You know, I'm never going to build a business that I can sell. Um, You know, all of those kind of trigger points, all those thoughts will be going through their heads probably for weeks until that message from you lands in their inbox and they're like thank god you know this is exactly what i've been looking for and it's the same with me people will be thinking you know everybody's ignoring me uh, i get i feel that that there is not um you, you know that people are not paying what i what i need to be paid for the services that i'm offering and all of these they're just symptoms it's not that people aren't paying they're just not paying you and why aren't they paying you? It's because you're not unique and differentiated enough and you're not communicating in the right way through the right channels in order for the right people to come forward and say, I want it. So yeah. it's it's all of that, which is which is so interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So tell me, how, how does it work with the agency with with call setting? What's been the process for you? How how did you find them? What's what was the handover like and what are they actually doing for you on a day to day basis? Well, I'm going to sound a bit greedy now when I say that I've got two agencies <laughs> working on on call setting. So I'll talk about I'll talk about both of them. So one of them is actually one of my clients and he has a data company. And originally um, he came to me and he explained what he did. And he said, you know, I could do with some help building my brand. And it's not that I can't get appointments, but it's just I want to build my business. So we talk about all sorts of things, things like kind of pricing strategy. We go into quite a lot as well. Um, so he has obviously, you know, he he has needs some help from me. And then as I got to know his service, I thought, you know, that sounds really good. 
So you you buy data and he was getting some great results for some of his clients who were B2B businesses, particularly in the sporting space. And I thought, you know, I'm going to try some of this. So I said to him, will you put together one of these lists for me? Because he creates lists, but he's very, very good at this because, you know, he just has the right background. So he said, yes. So what he did is he created this list, which was a bespoke um, data search. So it wasn't just kind of randomers on LinkedIn or Facebook or anything like that. It was a bespoke list. And then um, I said to him, you know, this is part of my uh, discussion with him. Look, the data is all well and good, but really you ought to have an appointment setting service as well. Because, you know, essentially you're just selling it to businesses who have their own sales team. But there are going to be businesses who don't have their own sales team. And you've got all this experience in call centers in the Philippines, which he, he does. You know, that used to be his business is he was a strategic consultant for call centers in the Philippines. So, you know, he has he knows how this stuff works. So he then started on my advice, he then started, uh, you know, do it, setting this up and his wife is from the Philippines. So, you know, he's got all the connections and uh, he said, right, I'm going to put my top appointment setter who is uh, also working for me on your account and we're going to give it a go. I said, fine. Um, so using this, this very uh, carefully targeted data and his appointment setting strategy, which I have to say, it's quite in your face. In the beginning, I thought that's a bit direct, but it's working. It's working because, and I don't know why it's working, but all I know is that it is working and I've got clients from it and they're coming through consistently and the calls that I'm getting are with exactly the right type of people. And that is the beauty and for me, the interesting thing of combining the data with the uh, appointment setting process because, you know, we never know when we're just outreaching cold, whether anybody has the budget to invest in what we do, whether, I mean, there's a lot that we don't know about them, but when you specifically do that targeting, it it becomes more accurate. And so, so that's, that's one. And then just, you know, before we revert to you, the other uh, agency is just somebody that I've been working with on some funnel stuff. And they said, and some content, and they said, um, we want to put an appointment setter on your account because I've got a bit of a, a, a commission arrangement with them that if they bring business to me, then they benefit from it as well. So they said, look, it's all thrown in, you know, it's all going to be the same cost, but we want to bring in one of our top, our top appointment setter and put it on your account. And I think the reason why they're doing that is because they're seeing that I'm getting results. And so they feel as though it's also an investment for them. Obviously, I'm paying them as well, but um, they're just allocating some of the funds that I'm paying them to that appointment setter. And he's only just started, but I'm seeing his messages and I'm thinking that's, uh, you know, that's good. He's doing whatever it is that he's doing. It, it doesn't feel weird. It doesn't feel uncomfortable. Um, it, it feels, yeah, good. And he's in India. So, okay. yeah. And, and got, of course, the other appointment set is in the Philippines. Yeah, yeah I was just about to say, so I've got proper, a proper world by team now. It's fantastic. Yeah, I have. Yeah, I've got a global team. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, I think, well, it's interesting hearing what you're saying there about the data. If you've, if anyone's not read Alex Hormozzi's books, he's got $100 million offers and $100 million leads. And in $100 million leads, he talks about this this strategy. So it's his cold outreach strategy. Yeah. And one of the main things he talks about is finding a good person with a good skill at getting data that works for your market. Yeah. And it's not that, you know, some people might have a skill set experience in a certain industry and some in another. So you just have to find the one that works for you. But if you find somebody that can basically get you a list of good contacts with numbers so they can then be taken through a call setting process, um, then that is like an absolute ideal strategy to go for. So because it's very reliable, it's very reproducible. And, you know, we talk a lot about creating either systems so you can then sell your business or to create a sellable asset to remove you from the process. So if doing it this way means that it's totally independent of you as a business owner because it is just data. Anyone can do call setting if you've got good data. 
And then who does the sales again? Once that where where where, where you are just now with the process, Jane. But once you've got a good call setting process, it's only a matter of time before you then get too many leads to then deal with even the strategy calls and then moving on to the actual closing calls. And so once those parts of the process are complete and you've actually got a process where then obviously someone is selling for you, now you've got a viable business that runs, which, which can make money without you. And obviously then you get onto the, the delivery and the service. But going back to this, uh, the, the, the script. So one of the, where we really had a, a breakthrough in our scripts was in actually Alex Hormozzi on his uh, $100 million leads has, gives away your scripts for free. And so we've taken those and then systemized the hell out of it. And so what he gives you is a PDF with just this example script. It's great, but you've obviously got to then tweak it to your own business, make it into slightly into your own voice to make it sound right. And then actually then get somebody else to understand how to use that on a day-to-day basis. And so now what I'm really interested in is then how do we then scale that? Now we've got that actually seems to be working. Mm -hmm. And the way that we, we scale it, as Alex talks about, it's exactly what you've done is we need to get a list of numbers mm -hmm. and to then actually start going for the uh, ringing or contacting those people. And I think that as you were saying this, like you said, uh, it was quite a full on approach. It was quite sort of uh, in your face. I think the words you used. And, and that's one of the things I think as a business owner, you fear the most, like I was saying, is like, how do I trust this person? This is huge fear. How do I trust this person to go onto my profiles and, and, and outreach like without, like people thinking I'm an I'm a Bam. hard salesy or whatever, you know, a bit of an idiot. Yeah. And um, and I think you've got to get over that fear. Because actually, if you go into a list of data, it's not that people are contacting your friends and uh, existing contacts. These are totally new, unknown people. Yeah. There's cold millions cold. upon millions of businesses in the world. Yeah. So if you in invert commas offend a few people, not offend, that's the wrong word. If if some people don't like the way you say something, as in they don't resonate with it then it's just, you've got to just have that mental attitude, I think, to, if you want to scale, it's just, you've just got to move on. you just got to keep moving on because like you say, if you're getting the results through, if not only getting calls set, but you're actually generating sales off the back of those calls, yeah. which by the sounds of it, you are brilliantly, yeah. then you've got to just trust in the process, haven't you? Well, exactly. Because, because as I said, my approach definitely would have been softer. Um, if you know, I'm quite a soft person. If I sell, I tend to sell in a very circular way. You know, I like to be charming. I like to people please to a certain extent. And that's just me. So it's like when I saw it, it was like, whoa, you know, that's direct. That is direct. It wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't it wasn't like some of the more clumsy sales messages that come through all the time on LinkedIn. But it was certainly to the point. But the thing is, uh, you know, as I said, Martin used to consult. Uh, this is a, the guy that I'm working with. He used to consult uh, for these call centers in the Philippines. They used to do this kind of stuff all the time. So basically, I'm leveraging all that experience. He knows what works and what doesn't. And um, and, and so, you know, he always says, you, you've got to knock on their door. You know, there's no point in having the putty putting around in the beginning. You've just got to lay it, lay it on the line and say, this is what I do. Is that of interest? Um, and uh, it's been it's been uh, a revelation, let's just say, um, because I think what happens with a lot of people is they they imagine they don't really understand the difference between a cold audience and a warm audience. And they think that everybody in the world is somehow or everybody on LinkedIn, for example, is going to have a view on them and that they might damage their reputation if you send a message out that somebody doesn't like. I mean, I've had people be extremely rude to me because I think what happens is when you when you do start taking your marketing seriously and you are going to come to the attention to people with two of people who are not your people not in any way, shape or form. If you met them in real life, you wouldn't gel. Um, they don't like what you stand for. Um, they don't like like you. Something about you offends them um, or they feel threatened by you or whatever it is. Not everybody is going to like us, right? Um, not everybody is going to need us. There are going to be people who they would really like what we do, but they're going to be angry because they can't afford it and maybe they're having a really hard time in their business. And so... They turn into keyboard warriors and trolls and start being sort of horrible and whatever. It doesn't really matter, does it? 
No, I think I, quite a few people have, have said something along the lines of even if you're not getting trolls, then you're not trying hard enough. Oh, and yeah. you know, in the early stages, I definitely I wasn't sure if I believed that. You know, I wanted to be nice to everybody, and obviously, I tried to be. But like you say, if you do it in a roundabout holistic way you're trying to serve you probably get a really high conversion rate like i know when i when i really go into the process then because of my experience because of my uh skills because i've been working with so many different clients like 260 odd clients over the past seven years like i've seen so many problems and so many barriers that i can i can i can let people see a different way of looking at most of the challenges they have. And so I can get really high conversions because of that. Yeah. But that isn't something I can do Go like uh, as a business owner. Like I can't be the person who is generating the sales in the business. Because as I said before, if you if you were the person generating sales, then you are the business. And yeah. it's whatever it is, whether it's sale, whether it's setting, nurturing, sales, delivery, whatever it is, yeah. If you're stuck doing it, and this is the the system's mentality, if you're stuck doing it yourself, then you yeah. are that process, and therefore it can't can't be scaled. And we, we talked about this before as well. So we do something with our clients called a core revenue flow. Yeah. And this is where we just basically it's like a client journey. It's how do you get awareness? How do you um, take people for lead generation? So capture their, con- their details. How do you nurture them? How do you convert them to prospects? Prospects opportunities, opportunity to sales, chase them up, repeat business, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Serve them, deliver the content, or deliver yeah. the service, all the rest of it. And and in mapping that out, that to me is has been one of the most eye opening things. And if I go wind back to the beginning of this year when I when I mapped out my own business and I do this on a regular basis do it one, at least once a year when we're doing sort of the, the yearly planning and what I noticed when I did it previously was I was the sales there was no sales coming from anywhere else but me yeah. and therefore if I wanted to scale the business I'd have to do more sales which means I'd have less time to do anything else yeah and so okay. that's when I took the the, the, the decision to then start working on bringing a salesperson and then the next part of the problem was okay how do we generate more leads and yeah. then the first one was the core setting and then we're moving on something else so with when you're looking at this when you're looking at you know, should i uh systemize this should i go for an agency you've got to look at all the other things that are going on in your business in your in your client journey or your core revenue flows we talk about yeah because if you've got cash in the bank and you've got other areas which need your attention, which is which which is where your specialty is. Yeah. Then actually going for an agency makes a lot of sense. Mm. Whereas if you've got time in, in the bank and you actually you know you you've got confidence in in an area like with the core setting, if you think that is something that I want to actually systemize and bring in house now, then you can go for the systemized approach and just mapping it out. Maybe I can touch on how we actually did the mapping, how we actually did created this process. I think it might be quite useful because when you're using an agency, this is the kind of stuff that they've already done. They will figure this out. And that's why they can then offer this as a service because they can do all the things sure. you just described. Exactly. Can... It's, it's a shortcut. It's definitely a shortcut. But as you said, over the long term, the issue with agencies, before we get on to you showing your incredible um, stuff, um, is that, you know, they're, they're not they're not your employees, right? Um, but even your employees, sometimes they'll run out of steam, personal stuff will happen, they'll lose motivation, you know, something. They go off something, sick. Something, something. They'll go sick or whatever. But at least uh, they're more under your control. The issue with agencies is that um, they're always chasing. I know because obviously I used to run agencies, right? You're, you, you know, once you've actually got the client in the bag, the next thing you do is you're looking for the next, you know, big payout, really. And, and that is just the way that agencies are. So, um, you know, you, you, they, they're quite hard. They can be quite hard to keep on their toes and keep focused on your business. And that is definitely uh, one of the main reasons uh, for agency churn and why a lot of, you know, clients don't stay loyal to agencies over the long term because, yeah, it's just a, a let's just say a flaw in the in the setup. 
which of course your process your process and your system addresses so yeah just wanted to say that pros and cons yeah definitely so i think the, yeah the quick the quick option definitely for, go for the agency because setting up and going through the process of actually refining a whatever system it is in this case we're talking about call setting strategy yeah is it is a is a bit of trial and error as well yeah you can use scripts so for example you know i said i've been using alex or moses but we've been using other script scripts in the past that we've you know, different trainings that have been on and um but even so it's not just like you just get a script and give it to somebody and say all right then off you go as I mentioned before, you've got to actually educate them. They've got to know about your business enough. You've got to be able to then give them a, a, so they can they can handle the the skew balls. Mm. And the way that we did this, so really simply, is that we started with me heavily involved in a, in by that I mean every single day we were having probably hour long meetings, mm. and where where we go through messages. Mm-hmm. And this is before we really refined our, our, our scripts down and kept them really, really tight. And this is the mistake I made, is that I was trying to be too personal in every message that we we did. And we look at their, their, their profile and think, well, how would I answer this? Oh, yeah, I could talk about X, Y, Z. I could explain that. Oh, I, yeah, I, oh, I, you know, my family is from uh, from Wales, for example. And I could then try to get a connection you know, on a, on, a, on a level with every single person. But the problem was that like my team couldn't do anything without me being in those meetings. So it was literally almost like I was just doing all the work <laughs> and they were there, they'd, they'd do the work and then I'd undo all their work and then I'd do it all again. <laughs> and and then I just said, look, this isn't working. We've got to just like rewrite this and start from scratch. We almost like sort of started from the beginning. And then we went through and okay, right. We just need a very simple structure. And it's like we 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 send a message and there's an option. Did they respond in the way that we hoped they would? Yeah. Here's the next message you send them. No. Well, we'll either just ignore them because it is totally inappropriate. Like when I say ignore them, we'll say a polite, you know, yeah. thanks very much and see you later. And this is what we do anyway, just in case, just in case it's, you know, they hadn't noticed whatever. Um, but then we then focus on the ones that actually say the thing we wanted them to say. And then the next stage, we do the same thing. And until we had that flow through, which is like literally on my on my uh, flow chart, literally like a branching flow chart. So it's a messaging chart. So it's like yeah. ask a question: Is it a positive response? Is it a negative response? Is it an yeah. askew ball? And then you just want the positive, 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 all the way down the middle. And by refining just that process to get actually an end result, yeah, like you say before, you may have to contact fifty people, yeah, but yet to get one person to raise a hand all the way to the end. And say, yeah, here's my number. Phone me. I'm really interested in what you do. This is exactly what I need right now. But that doesn't matter if it's not you doing it personally, and that and and you're not paying over the odds for someone to do it. So that's why I like um, using places, uh, uh, using um, uh, working with people from places like the Philippines, where we can actually get a, a more affordable option for this. Because once the messaging's there, yeah. It doesn't matter where somebody's from. I mean, obviously, they've got to be able to speak English and, and write coherent English. But Philippine second language is English. It's like Sweden. It's like yeah, ninety nine percent of no, about ninety percent of Swedes speak pretty fluent English, and it's yes. the same over there in English. Uh, for same over there in um in in Philippines. Sorry. So finding somebody to do this actually isn't the problem. It's just about having a logical approach to doing it. And I was getting caught on all the skew balls dragged into every conversation trying to sort of like save or salvage or n- over nurture and like really like, oh this, this opportunity could be oh this could be a referral opportunity or this could be a jv partnership and like looking for everything and everything instead of doing the one thing that I actually intended to do and the game changing moment for me yeah. i'll just revert back to, to, to mention alex one more time is at the top of his script and this was it regardless of what he says and regardless of what we say the top of the set, the goal of this conversation is to book a 10 minute warm up call. That's it. The only point of it is to book, get on the phone for a call setter to set a strategy call. It's not to book the strategy call. And if you've just focused on that one goal, and if somebody is saying, oh, yeah, if you think, oh, there could be a good JV partner, or, oh, you know what, this person might be ready in a while, I'll do some nurturing now, that's not the purpose 
There is one goal. So are they going to book a call with you? No, move on. No, move on. And like you say at the beginning, I'm kind of said it on um you said it on on my call before we were speaking, but you said, you know, you looked at your LinkedIn profile and you had like 50 no 50 people they rejected. You were like, that's fantastic. And that's the that is the just the game changer for me was that realization, the penny dropped. There is only one outcome of this, and everything else needs to be just pushed aside and keep the focus on. And that's how I believe that you get this or many, many types of sales and marketing is, is about that. It's about staying laser focused on the next logical step in the process. Yeah. And marketing is a disqualification process. Yeah. That is the important thing to remember. So, uh, you know, you don't want to be that. This is the challenge that I have with networking because, uh, you know, I, I have mixed feelings about networking. And in fact, I run a networking event. I host an event, um, quite, quite a high level event. So I know how powerful it can be on the one hand. But also the challenge with it is that you're developing relationships with people too early in the game. And this is why I've, I'm obsessed with this thing called the selling environment. So what I am currently um, very, very keen on doing is just creating assets so that people can come into my world as opposed to getting them on a 10 minute call, which I don't really want. I don't want to do. I don't really want anybody else to do at this particular point. What I do want them to do is I want them to take another step into my world and start consuming my content. And actually, then they can decide, you know what, I think she's I can't stand this woman. Oh, my God, I'd never work with her in a million years. Or, you know what, I actually quite like her. I like what she's got to say. This sounds new, exciting and different. Click. I'll book a call. That's that's, you know, what I like to do. Yeah. Okay, well, Steve, you're going to share something very exciting now, aren't you? Am I? What am I going to well, share? Well, you for said you, you were going to share some of your incredible charts that just blew me away earlier on. Oh, okay, do you want me to share the core revenue flow that we looked at before? Yes, yes. Okay, I okay, okay, cool. Yes. Yeah, I, I'm not. I just have to give me two seconds to 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 prepare this. So, for those listening, this is going to be very boring. Um, so what I'm going to do is talk you through this. So if you're listening to the podcast, I'm just going to talk you through this. Yeah. Um, I've got about 10 minutes, in fact, before I have to go and pick up my son. Yep. So I'm going to have to do this relatively quickly. Yeah. But I'm going to just go through and explain how we use this. And as I was saying before, the, the real benefit of this, when you're looking at any part of your business, is to be able to stay, uh, put your focus and attention on the things that need it, not the things you want to put them on. And that's the, 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 I think the biggest challenge for business owners is, is actually accepting that to run a successful business, you can't always do what you want. <laughs> You've got to actually be prepared to do what's needed. Yes, totally agree. And, and without a clear picture of, okay, well, what is needed in the entirety to make my business successful? Mm. It's, it's almost impossible because the, the list of projects like we have a list of projects and systems like ongoing projects and systems or future possible project systems. I've got about 112 of mm -hmm. those in our business. And so just looking at that long list would be totally overwhelming. Like what should we be working on now? What should we park? What should we uh, just be maintaining? Like, so we need some visual that I do anyway. I'm a very visual person. I need something that I can look at and go, okay, yeah, this is where the hole is. Yeah. And the core revenue flow is is what we do and how I identified in my business as I said earlier in the year that I needed to get that core sales process off me onto somebody else and systemize the hell out of that. Yeah. And then for me going forward, actually looking at different lead generation opportunities, not lead generation, sorry, lead to opportunity conversion. So turning our, our existing list now into opportunities, that's my next focus. And I'll show you that if we have time. But um, for now, I'll just... I'll just I'm going to share my screen, but I'm just going to talk you through this. And it's something I've already talked about on a podcast. So it does work quite well on a podcast as well. Um, so if you're listening to this podcast, though, and you want to actually see this as a visual, then we will be, when this is published, it'll be on the, the website and on our YouTube channel. So you can go and have a look and watch the video through if you want to have a look at this. So what I'm showing now is basically the first step in a multi-step, what I call the core revenue flow. And for every business, it's pretty much the same. What you'll have in the boxes is unique to your business, but the process is the same. We all want to find new clients, sell stuff to them, 
and hopefully get them to come back for more and tell their friends about us. And that's what this is about. It's about creating a map of that process. Mm -hmm. So I just want to run through really quickly the, the steps and I'll show you or talk you through the one that I've done for my business recently because we're coming up to the planning for next year. And so that was that's enabled me to then focus on uh, or, for, or to plan to focus the team on the essential parts. So we start off with awareness and trust. So how do we build trust and authority in the in our arena, in our industry, so people become aware of who we are and what we do. And this is things like um, advertising, social media, and website traffic, and basically just getting out onto social media. Then we've got lead generation. So how do we attract those potential clients um, and gather those leads effectively? So capturing their details, things like lead magnets or webinar ref, um, registrations, that kind of thing. Once we've actually got those people into our lists, we're going to actually nurture them. So we build trust with them until like you're saying before, until they're ready to actually move towards us because they go, hey, I quite like the stuff they're talking about. I'm actually, you know, they, they've just talked about something that is a pain of mine. Now I'm going to move towards them. So it gives them some time to get to know you. Then once they've, once um, we want to then convert them, sorry, from that being on our list, they've been nurtured. Now we want to actually get them to have an opportunity to actually take action to speak to us and become a real prospect. And if we don't give people opportunities to do that, only a few people will actually bother to actually reach out and say, hey, I've been listening to you for a while. What do you do? Like, how can you help me? So giving people information about what we actually do is a key part. And this is I mean, just the one area that I'm going to focus on. I identified it by going through this entire process and actually think about how do we do each of these steps? What systems do we have in place at the moment, this moment in time for each of these steps? And for us, this is the one where actually I realized there's a big hole. We're not doing this because we've been relying on referrals too much. And so yeah. therefore we're not, even though I've got this brilliant audience and, you know, people open my emails, hundreds and hundreds of people open my emails every week, mm. but I'm not actually telling people, hey, come and work with me. This is what I do. This is how I can help. And so this is the one area that we're focusing on. Amazing. So once you've got your, your, you've given people the opportunity to actually reach out and say, this is what I want to actually do. We're then actually going to, um, qualify those people to find out are you even if they want to work with you do you want to work with them are they your ideal clients once you know they are a good fit we then need to actually speak to them and turn and convert them from being an opportunity into a sale so that's typically for us a sales call you might have a checkout depending on you know a checkout page or whatever and then what happens if they don't buy so now we're going to chase those people up we're also going to collect money from them so we need a money system Mm -hmm. We're then going to have the opportunity to up, to upsell them. If there's other things we can do to add value to them even more at that moment in time, to multiply by actually capturing and then following up with referrals professionally. Then once we've actually done that part of the sales process, we're now into serving them. So how do we yeah. onboard them? How do we serve them? And how do yeah. we then amplify them by finding out, did they have a good experience with us? And if they did, who else do they know that might want to, might want to work with us? And finally, how do we actually increase our lifetime value of our clients by encouraging repeat business, maintaining a long-term relationship, and therefore, as I say, yeah, increasing how long they stay and how much eventually they actually pay for us. And it's these steps which pretty much every business has. And it's just about going through this in a step-by-step -step way, mapping this out. Um, I'm going to show you very quickly for those. I'm just showing on the screen now how we've done this um, in our business, this is actually my live on now and going through and mapping out each of the internal processes within there. So you end up with quite a lot of individual steps to map out your entire process. But, and, and if you do this and you're at the early stages, you think, well, I've got like hardly any of this stuff. Then you then just go through and say, okay, which ones are the most important right now? So if you've got friends and colleagues that might refer people to you, then you don't need all the marketing to begin with. You can come back to that later. Focus on the referrals and the closing those referrals and serving them well so they refer more people and just focus on that. And that's what I've done for years and years. But then you'll go, okay, well, what else do I need to do? Rather than doing what I've been guilty on in the past is trying to do everything. Mm. And therefore you do everything badly. So focus on one avenue, whether you're going to go for paid ads, whether you're going to go for organic, whether you're going to go for referrals and make that profitable and then look at the other areas rather than getting overwhelmed and thinking, oh, my God, I have so much to do. I've just read Daniel Priest's 24 assets. and so now I'm absolutely <laughs> in my pants because I've got none of this stuff. You know, whatever it is you've done, 
and and it's exactly what I did you know, five six years ago. Um, and just go no, let's just laser focus. What is what should we what can how do we generate money right now? Get that done, serve clients well, and then go and look at the other bits. But doing this, giving this visual picture for me has been incredibly valuable for actually seeing the holes in my entire client journey and therefore systematically plugging them over the years. Yeah. Oh my God. You know, that is just um, incredible, really. I just love it, Steve. And, um, you know, obviously I'm very keen on systems. As I mean, we're here because we both love systems. It's just my systems have been more messaging systems, uh, brand creation systems, you know, that's the stuff that comes naturally to me. And so I just love it when I meet and talk to an operational expert like you, because it switches on all these lights in my brain. And I'm like, I need this. I really do. So thank you so much for sharing. It has been such an amazing conversation as ever, Steve. I really enjoyed it. I can't wait to bring this to to your audience and my audience as well. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, we're going to be getting into a lot more really, really interesting and useful content as time goes on. So yeah, thank you so much, Steve, for another fascinating discussion. Yeah, thanks, Jane. Yeah, looking forward to uh, exploring the agency more as always. As I always come away <laughs> from these conversations with you thinking, I really need to do that. So one thing I'm going to do just, <laughs> just as a... Uh, a uh, an action point for me is I'm actually going to a, uh, appoint an agency to do some core setting, and then I'm basically going to split test, if you like, and see who which is more effective and co- and both cost effective, but also, you know, with regards to actually generating good quality leads. Because ultimately, I'm not beholden on any one way of doing something. I just want the way that actually works most efficiently right now. And so I think that's a great way to do it. Whether you're hiring two people to to be your personal call setters and see which one is the best. Yeah. You know, why not actually split test in-house versus agency and actually see which one works out. So, yeah. yeah. And, and you're, we're here to share our results with you as well. So that's a very good reason to keep coming back. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, I definitely. Want, once this is now, this is, we've had success on this in a you know couple of months time, I'll be sharing exactly the statistics on this and happy to share that and what's working what's not and the mistakes that i've made again and to to refine it to make it actually into something that works exactly cool all right thank you see you soon thanks jane